Hey, this is Dave Hompes from hpylorisymptoms.com. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how heartburn, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and irritable bowel syndrome can be caused by a condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or alternatively called SIBO, which is how I'm gonna address it, because it's just a lot easier to say. So what is SIBO exactly? Well, SIBO is the overgrowth of certain kinds of bacteria in the upper part of the intestine where they shouldn't really be overgrowing. It's a little bit like weeds growing in a garden. You know, the weeds are plants and they're entitled to grow wherever they want, and you'll find weeds growing everywhere. But they're not really supposed to be in your nicely crafted garden where all the flowers and the shrubs and the nice stuff is supposed to be. And it's a little bit like that in the intestine. There are certain microbial compositions in different parts of the digestive system. The small intestine is supposed to have quite a lot of bacteria in there, but certainly not as many bacteria as we have further down in the large intestine and colon. Now, when conditions favor them, certain bacteria can actually migrate and make their way back up the digestive system, and all of a sudden, you get an overgrowth of bugs that shouldn't really be there. And that brings with it a whole, no a whole bunch of problems, as we'll talk about shortly. Now, another reason why small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can happen is low stomach acid. If you're not making enough stomach acid, then some of these bacteria can slip through and they can also, uh, the low stomach acid can also change the environment in the upper small intestine. And all of a sudden, woo, we have a flourishing population of bad bugs or even good bugs in the wrong place that start to create problems. Now, what problems does SIBO cause? Well, one of the things that the bacteria are really good at is they're fantastic at uh, fermenting food, particularly carbohydrates. So if you eat a whole bunch of carbohydrates, and remember the Western diet at the moment is very heavy in bread, in pasta, in rice, in sugar, in biscuits, in potatoes, in crackers, and so on and so forth. And all of that breaks down into food for the bugs. So if the bugs are overgrowing, and then you feed them with those foods, you get a whole bunch of fermentation. With fermentation comes gas. So one of the hallmark or trademark signs of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is bloating, feeling or looking seven or eight months pregnant, not being able to fit into your dress or your pair of jeans, whole bunch of blowing up like a balloon. That brings with it other problems because the increased pressure in the digestive system and in the abdominal cavity in general can actually push things up, which creates heartburn and gastroesophageal reflux disease, and it can push things down creating loose stools, diarrhea, and what have you. What you basically end up with with SIBO is a whole mess in the digestive system. We typically find that SIBO is accompanied by things like candida overgrowth, and sometimes even parasites as well. And furthermore, many people who have the stomach infection H. pylori also have SIBO because the H. pylori helps to lower the stomach acid in the first place, which is not a good thing to happen. How on earth would you know if you have SIBO? Well, unfortunately, the general consensus in the medical system is that we don't need to test for SIBO. What we're gonna do is send you home with a diagnosis of gastroesophageal reflux disease and or irritable bowel syndrome. But the research is pretty clear. A study by Dr. Mark Pimentel showed that 78% of all the people he tested who had irritable bowel syndrome also had SIBO. And when he treated them with antibiotics specific to the SIBO, more than 75% of them experienced a significant improvement in their symptoms, which is a fairly uh, significant amount of people uh, to improve just with a single treatment. So why don't doctors test? Well, one of the reasons they don't test is that they're just too busy. Another reason that they don't test is quite simply because They'd rather send you home with medications to try and deal with the symptoms, unfortunately, rather than trying to find the underlying, underlying cause of the problem. When we test our clients and patients with a combination of stool testing and a test called organic acids, we're able to detect SIBO, parasites, candida, H. pylori, and digestive weaknesses such as low pancreatic enzyme levels, all of which are very important in the symptom pattern of heartburn uh, acid reflux and irritable bowel syndrome. And we find time and time again that we agree with Dr. Pimentel's research 
and that basically, as soon as we help people deal with the chronic infections or the bacterial overgrowth and what have you that they have in their gut, then they start to feel better reasonably quickly. If you would like to know how you can actually get accurately tested for all of these bugs that I'm talking about in this video, then please visit my website, hpylorisymptoms.com. You'll find a ton of information at the website on how these bad bugs cause symptoms, the specific symptoms that they do cause within the digestive system, and how some of those digestive problems can escalate and begin to cause problems elsewhere in the body as well. So if you'd like some further information, as I say, it's hpylorisymptoms.com. My name is Dave Pompez. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll catch you again very soon. Thanks a lot.